Thank you, everyone. See you next week. <laughs> Boy, are we blessed. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. We are so blessed. Thank you for sharing those gifts with us. And that's what it's all about, sharing our gifts with the world, knowing that our gifts are the one thing that makes it all work because nobody else can do it like you. You are the unique individual expression of God itself in this world. And your individual expression is what is needed. That's the thing that's needed most. You don't have to worry. Excuse me. (laughs) You don't have to worry about what anybody else is doing. You don't have to worry about that little tickle in your throat. (laughs) I was... was, uh, in the bathroom a couple Sundays ago, right in the middle of a song, I was blowing my nose and my microphone was on. <laughs> and Jack was looking around. Going, what? Is... <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> So you have to be willing to be embarrassed once in a while. Just be yourself, be your authentic self, and don't worry about being embarrassed once in a while because it's all temporary anyway. The thing that I really dedicate my life to is conscious contact, is remembering who I am, and using that as the way I discover who you are. The way I know my neighbor is to find out more about how I was created, that loving, beautiful spirit that created me. When I get in touch with that, that's what I'm going to see in you. And that's what I'm going to start to see everywhere. And this is how Yeshua, Jesus, was a healer. He healed because he saw through the appearance to the reality of you. We are growing, dynamic, spiritual beings. We're constantly learning. We're constantly improving our knowledge of ourselves. We're constantly improving our contact with God mind. And then we ultimately take that out into the world. And that's really our true purpose. Or not. Or not. If we're not consciously improving our contact with God mind and the awareness of ourselves, we're just going to be a false image An ego walking around, trying to puff itself up to become something. We'll we'll be always just pulled by the wind this way and that way. I would rather be master of my own life than blown about by the winds of this world. Wouldn't you? Amen. I would. And in order to do that, we have to increase our conscious contact with the universal mind. It's through prayer, meditation, forgiveness, all the good stuff, all the things that make us feel good anyway, is how we are able to improve the quality of our God contact. It is through the power of surrender. Today's daily word, amazing, talked about surrender. It's the power of surrender and service that we come into the experience of the divine mind active in us. And I love it because when we're serving others, we're really serving ourselves. When we're attacking and judging others, we don't often see that it's just an attack upon ourselves. We think, that's how I defend myself. That's how I remain strong. You know, that's how I am somebody in the world. And it's not like that. When you're putting somebody else down, you're putting yourself down. And we all know it. This is about... Surrender. It's like the 11th step in any 12-step program. Through prayer and meditation, we seek to improve our conscious contact with God. It's a climb. We're never going to be absolutely, perfectly aware of everything that God is. But I can tell you one thing. Everything that God is, you are already that because you were created by that. 
If you are created by a perfect God, you are perfect, even if it can't be fathomed or comprehended in your intelligent awareness. You do comprehend it in your soul, in your spirit, in the cells of your body. It's natural. So the important thing is to get our intellect out of the way sometimes, to really experience the spirit. I'm going to tell you something that Myrtle Fillmore said. Because she's the co-founder of Unity. We talk about Charles Fillmore a lot. And we don't often mention Myrtle, who is just as powerful a force. <laughs> Dolores said something funny. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Welcome back, Dolores. <laughs> Something like Myrtle was the heart and Charles was the brains. <laughs> what did she say? She was it. That was it. Without Myrtle, there would be no unity because she's the one that got it started and then Charles saw a good thing when he saw it and jumped in. All right. Did you all hear that? <laughs> did you all hear that? That was really great. Myrtle is the one who got unity started. Charles saw a good thing and he jumped in. <laughs> and this is the kind of idea that he jumped into. Spiritual understanding. If you would grow in understanding of spiritual things, you must become as a little child and let the universal spirit of good teach you. Do not strain your intellect in trying to understand the mighty questions of life. Wait until you have developed faculties that can comprehend them. And that's what a spiritual center is all about. It's a place where you can come and develop your spiritual faculties so that you can understand what is occurring in divine mind, universal mind. And we just have so much fun and we take so much joy in developing our spiritual faculties. And it's so great because we can be authentic. We, we don't know everything. We can make mistakes. We can be embarrassed sometimes. We can tell jokes. We can just be ourselves. I love that. We're not trying to tell you how it is. We want you to discover it for yourself because that's the only way you'll ever believe it is to discover the divinity within you for yourself. The truth will always be the truth. You'll always be divine in nature. You never can change who you are. But thinking that you have changed yourself, you also think it's impossible to be divine. You think you were successful in separating yourself from God, and it's not true. You were not successful in that. The 11th step in the 12-step program is very simple. We sought to improve our conscious contact with God, the God of our understanding, through prayer and meditation, asking only for knowledge of his will, of its will, the will of God. Only That's all I'm asking for is knowledge of that will. And it changes the idea of prayer around completely because I'm not telling the universe, this is the way it is and I have to have it look this way. I'm not begging the universe for something. I'm praying for knowledge. I'm praying to be enlightened. I'm praying to be illumined. I want my mind to be illumined to the truth. I want to understand and experience the truth in a real way that's deep down in the very core of the cells of my being. I want to know what the truth is. And that's the only way you'll believe it, is if it happens to you. People can tell you anything they want, you can read all the books in the universe. And some of us have. <laughs> then you can start writing them. <laughs> but until you get it down in the depths of the cells of your being, you won't believe it. We're here to make God manifest in our lives. That's the only thing. See, the next part of that prayer is knowledge for the will what the will of God is, and the power to carry that out. So I'm also praying after the knowledge that I have the strength, <clears throat> the fortitude to keep climbing, to, to 
carry that out in my life. Now that I have the knowledge, what am I going to do with it? That's when your prayer really gets real. Because you're going to be down on your knees and you're going to be saying, I need help. And guess what? Help is yours. Help is all around you, is within you and within everyone you meet. It's in everything. It's in nature. It's in the universe naturally. It's already there. Everything is God. Everything is a part of God. And so you could never be left out of that. What a divine appointment to make God manifest in our lives. Now that's living on purpose. If somebody asks you, what do you do? What's your job, right? What's your profession? My job is to make God manifest in the world. (laughs) Well, he's off his medication again. (laughs) That's my profession. It was my profession before I put on the suit and got up here. It was my profession the day I was born. It's your profession as well to make manifest the will of God in this world, to make manifest the will of love in this world, to make manifest the light and the joy and the peace and the harmony that we were born into manifest in your world. You have the power. What's your world looking like? Because it's just up to you. What your world looks like is a product of what you think it should be. That's all. What is it looking like for you? Because You are in control. You have the power to make the will of God manifest. My job is to be the place where divine light of universal mind shines through in living color to illuminate this world. That's my job. That's my profession. Remember the scripture, John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4. It says, as he is, so are we in this world. What is your experience. What is your notion of God? What is God to you individually, personally? When you pray, when you go into the depths of your heart, what is the divine to you? What does that mean? What is your experience of the divine? Whatever that is, so are you. You are that in this world. The biggest idea you could think of That's you. Whatever God is, that's you in this world. As God is, spirit is, divine mind is, perfect love is, so am I in this world. That's my profession. That's what I do. Doesn't have anything to do with a place. Doesn't have anything to do with what you seem to be doing for money, how you exchange in the world. If you are about your purpose, your job is going to be to be the divine light in that. Cindy knows this well because she walks around being the divine light in her world. And I see how she serves people and it really touches my heart because it's just a very quiet way to go around being the Christ. And I see it in you and you and you and you and you and in you and in you, and in you, and in you. I see it. I see it happening. And in you. She's wearing it. <laughs> and me. I'm doing it. Definitely. And Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. And you just have to be you. That's all you have to do, is be yourself. And be the place where the divine shines through, in living color, to illuminate the world. Increasing our conscious contact with universal mind is the fastest, the easiest, and most certain way to remember who we really are. It really is. Because as Charles Fillmore repeatedly said, probably got it from Myrtle. (laughs) Divine mind is our only reality. Divine mind is our only reality. Everything else is... Illusion. Everything else is an error of thinking. It's, just, it's a fixation on sense consciousness. Divine mind is our reality. You've made an image of yourself. You continue to believe in that image. 
And if it's not divine mind, if it's not perfect, that image is wrong. And you need to keep climbing. You need to keep moving up in your consciousness to get a better view of who you are. Do you ever look in the mirror and say, divine mind is your only reality? Do you ever look in the mirror and say, good morning, God? Oh, that's blasphemy. No, no, I'm separate. No, I'm a little human being. I've done all these things, or I haven't done these things, and this is me, and this is my life, and this is what I look like. No, look in the mirror, see the light that's in the mirror, and just tell yourself, you're the light of the world. Get out there and be the light of the world today. Just do that. You can talk to yourself. It's fine. (laughs) Nobody will think you're off your medication. (laughs) If they do, too bad, yeah. (laughs) I love it. Of course, they always lock up and... and I'm not going to get into this. (laughs) But that's what they always do to the prophet. You always kill the messenger. You crucify the messenger. But again, this is why Yeshua was such an important way shore for us. Because at the moment of his decision, you know, his disciples were saying, you can't go into Jerusalem. They're going to crucify you. He's like, talk to the hand, dude. <laughs> talk to the hand. This is my divine appointment. I'm going to do what I have to do. He actually said, get thee behind me, Satan. You know, he, but, you know, that's biblical stuff. Today we say, <laughs> talk to the hand, dude. That's what he was saying to Peter, who was like his main man. He was like, he, wa- he was. Hey, come on in. That's okay, come on in, come on in. Because... <laughs> The important part of that story is that Jesus in Yeshua, in his conscious contact with all there is, knew that whatever happened, he would still be himself. Even if he was crucified, that he would somehow resurrect. He didn't know what that would look like, but he knew through his conscious contact with God that that would happen. And on the way there, what happened was forgiveness. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. They don't know what they're doing because they don't know who they are. And it's still so evident in the world today that people are not knowing who they are. And the ego that they've pretended to be is what they've propped up and put out front to speak for them. And I would rather have the Christ in me speak for me. So any time that you are to speak or demonstrate anything to anyone... Go within for a second. Go within and allow the Christ within you to speak for you. We're too often so quick to react and allow the ego to be our default response in any situation. To allow the ego to be the one who knows what's going on here and to tell everybody what's going on. And then I'll be fine. I'll just work it out. I'll tell you guys what's going on and my reality will be that. And you have to adapt to my reality. After all, I'm the master of my own world. Right? And that's the ego. Yeah, that's the world you have. And it's about that big. Can you see the space between my fingers? That's how big your reality is. The Christ within you is all reality. And that's who we are. And that's how we can come to understand everything that's happening in the universe from a spiritual understanding. The understanding that Myrtle was speaking of is a spiritual understanding. And that understanding, you let the mind of which was in Christ Jesus, Yesh, I call him Yeshua because that was closer to the right pronunciation. Let that mind which was in him also be in you. It's another scripture from the Bible. For finding himself in the form of God, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, these scriptures have been around for a long time, and they speak of a pretty direct experience of conscious contact. Finding yourself to be in the form of God, 
You don't think it robbery to be equal with God. Use the power of your mind to heal and to bless and to harmonize every situation in your life, to be a power of love in this world. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Let that mind which was in Christ Jesus also be in you. Because it is your mind, divine mind, is your only reality. And then, what happened? This is so cool. I love the scripture so much because it says it all in three lines. Being found in the form of God, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made of himself no reputation and took on the form of a servant. Wow, that's the answer. Service. I love it. He didn't want to be president. He didn't want to be king of the world. In fact, that was his temptation. When the devil or the ego says, look, if you just give your power over to me, to the ego, I'll give you the whole world. Again, he said, talk to the hand. Right? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. He also said, my kingdom is not of this world. I'm here to demonstrate a different world. It's not the one you're seeing. It's not the one you're looking at. It's a transformed world that comes about through recognition of our oneness with divine mind, our oneness with God. It's God's world manifest here. And so again, as it was his job, so it is you to make the will of God manifest here in living color, illuminated for all. That's our job. That's the way we serve. We don't have to worry about how it's going to happen. Our job is to be the radiating center of divine light that we are. And let everything manifest according to the will of God. To truly let the mind which was in Christ Jesus be in you. For divine mind is our only reality. These truths, when you meditate on them, they start to sink deep into your consciousness. And you start to manifest it. Not just in your body and health and in prosperity and well-being, but in your world, in harmony and greater peace and abundance for everyone. You start to see those around you start to wake up. You start to see everyone around you begin to have an experience and a, of a possibility of a different world that is in harmony, of a possibility of a world that really does manifest the perfect love, the perfect will of God. So that's my job, and I hope that's your job too. Take on that profession. When somebody says, what do you do? You just tell them. One more time. My job is to manifest the will of God in this world. In living color, illuminate this world. All right, so be a blessing, be blessed. I'll see you guys in three weeks. I'm going to South America to illuminate my world down there. Lily and I are going down there to um, give some seminars in A Course in Miracles, in A Course in Miracles retreat in Argentina seminar in Colombia to visit our Colombian family and we're just going to be so grateful to go and so grateful to return. I love you so much. Be a blessing to everyone because you are blessed. I love you. You have been watching the message from our Sunday celebration service here at Unity on Cape Cod providing a positive path for spiritual living. Please join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 147 Walton Ave, Hyannis, Mass. And visit us online at www.unityoncapecod.org.